New York, they're working against the clock now. Here comes Derek Harper. Looking for Ewing, he gets it there. The turnaround, Jay. Oh, what a shot. Patrick Ewing wins it with a fadeaway. The dagger from 18. Welcome everybody to New York City as we rewind the tape and look back at two of the best teams in the East in the mid-90s, the Orlando Magic, a young team both in regard to the roster and the organization itself, and an expansion team back in 1989. They'll take on an established veteran team, but New York Knicks. And the Magic will have their work cut out for them tonight. In their last nine games here in New York, they've only managed one win. And the Magic, not a very good road team at all, but their great home record has been the thing that's kept them so competitive. But the Knicks, you know. Dealing with the size and athleticism of the Magic will be a challenge. That's right. With Penny Hardaway and Shaq, and this team blessed with great size and athleticism. We'll see if the Knicks can override that with their veteran experience. And let's set the floor here. For the Knicks, we've got Derek Harper and John Starks at the 1 and 2. Charles Smith and Charles Oakley providing plenty of muscle at the forwards. And the big man in the middle inside, Patrick Ewing. And on the court for the Magic, Shaquille O'Neal is at the center. Horace Grant alongside him at power forward. Penny Hardaway is the big 6'7 point guard. And the wings, Royal and Nick Anderson. You know, Patrick Ewing may never have won a title, guys, but everybody knows he's a winner. I mean, the Knicks only missed the playoffs twice in the 15 years he played there. Now here's Ewing. And Shaq sends it back. Now here is Hardaway. Here's Anderson. Blanketed by the D, he fights to the rim for the layup. Anderson's got his first basket. And you know, talking about Patrick Ewing, guys, he came close a couple of times to winning that elusive championship. Lost by four points in Game 7 against Houston on the road in the 94 Finals. And then in 99, remember the Knicks were the eighth seed and the first eighth seed ever to make the finals. But Ewing got injured just prior to the series and unfortunately was not able to, to play a role in that series against San Antonio. Penny and Shaq connect. They made that one look easy, didn't they? Here's Harper. Ewing against Shaq. Goes straight up. Here's Harper. Drops in the layup for two. Well, one indicator of the kind of player Derek Harper was, his durability and longevity. Lasted 16 seasons in the NBA, and he played all 82 games six different times. Now here is Hardaway. And Jack backs down. Pulls up. And Oakley with the rebound right there. And the Knicks with the ball. Four-point game. The basket is good. The call goes his way, and we could be looking at a three-point play. Well, John Stark, still beloved in New York for his heart and his hustle. Uh, and, you know, Patrick Ewing was once asked if Starks would rank among his favorite teammates. Ewing said simply, he is my favorite teammate. Bonner, he's checked in for New York. Mason comes in for Smith. Scotty's checked in for Orlando. Good for the three-point play. Well, John Starks took the long route to the NBA, the circuitous route. Played at several community colleges before attending Oklahoma State, and then undrafted and played in the minor leagues for a while, too. There's the dish to Anderson. Shot clock at six. Poked away. Out of bounds. And they'll keep possession. And Starks almost didn't make the Knicks. He was trying out for the team back in 1990. And this is an interesting story. They were all set to cut him at the end of practice. But he tried to 
make a dunk on Patrick Ewing. He hurt his knee, and the team wasn't allowed by league rules to release him, so he had to stay. Now, you, you're not allowed to release an injured player in the NBA, and what a break that was for the Knicks. I mean, he went on to make the starting lineup and that became really a huge factor in the success of those Knicks teams. Mason against Scott. Mason, the pass to Ewing. Ripped away by Shaq. Well, it took advantage of the tight space on the inside to make the steal there. Knicks trailed by three. Here's Harper. Can't tie it up as that one misses. And we get a look here at Shaquille O'Neal back at the very start of his career. And, of course, he retired this offseason at the age of 39. But what a mark he's left on the game of basketball. One of the greatest centers in the history of the NBA and certainly one of the more enjoyable personalities we've seen in the league as well. You know, for a guy like him who can light it up like that, that's too easy. Harper against Hardaway. Patrick Ewing covering. And Hardaway gets it to go. Well, Clark, getting back to Shaq, you know, his retirement is, is kind of bittersweet. I mean, he, he would have liked to have stayed healthy and maybe given it one more go for a championship run with Boston. They were awfully close a year ago, but I, I think he knew when it was time. He was injured. He just didn't quite have it anymore. And I'm guessing we haven't seen the last of him. We'll probably see a lot of him on TV the next few years made sure everybody saw that slam Kevin stayed on the rim for a little while extra <laughs> maybe he wanted to give his legs a little rest there Clark here's a Starks thank in off the glass Starks has got seven points in the game nice hot start for him here making more than he's missed so far and you know guys you talk about Penny Hardaway think about him in his prime 20 points seven rebounds five assists this is a guy who was an absolute superstar unfortunately as you know his career was cut short by injury yeah he was a very complete combo guard Steve special special talent he also averaged two steals a game and shot 50 percent from the floor so he could do it all and he did it with flair and with uh, consistency until the injuries popped up and the official signal the backcourt violation not very careful there so it's both teams making substitutions here Eight seconds left in the first. That doesn't go on the chance to tie. Next. Charles Baker. First person foul, two stars. And that concludes a back and forth high scoring first quarter of play. Magic out in front. They're up by two. And a good start. to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Tonight's matchup pits two Western Conference adversaries going against each other. Two organizations that brought their first titles to their respective cities in the early 70s. The Los Angeles Lakers, the grizzled veterans of seven finals appearances over the last decade. The Milwaukee Bucks, an expansion team in 1968. 
in already vaulting to dominance. And really the key to their success, the superstar young talent who came into the league is Lou Alcindor, now of course known as the great Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And the 7-2 Kareem really inherited the mantle as the next great NBA big man from the moment he entered the NBA. But in this game, he'll face up against a giant every bit as equal, the 7-1 legend Wilt Chamberlain. And that's going to be a matchup to watch. Wilt is much stronger. He'll try to take advantage of that strength inside. Kareem, some 50 pounds lighter, he'll have his work cut out for him in the paint. And then the matchup at point guard. Jerry West and Oscar Robertson, two superstar talents. It should be a treat to watch. And looking at this Bucks team, Bobby Dandridge and Greg Smith at the forwards. At the guard positions, Oscar Robertson and the sharpshooting John McLaughlin. And in the middle, the tallest man on the floor, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And for the Lakers, their forwards are Keith Erickson at the three, Elgin Baylor in at the four, and at the five, the big man, Wilt Chamberlain, and their high-scoring backcourt, Jerry West and Gail Goodrich. And Bob Dandridge was extremely valuable for the kind of defense we saw right there. He got recognized for that D in 1979, was named to the NBA's all-defensive first team. And Oscar Robertson, guys, the owner of one of the all-time great records in the NBA, one that may never be broken. He's the only player in NBA history to average a triple-double for an entire season. 31 points, 11 assists, 12 rebounds a game. Robertson outside. Releases from 15. And again, the Bucks miss. And Clark, going back to Oscar Robertson, you talk about the, the triple-double season. I mean, what's incredible is when you look at Robertson's stats from his first five seasons, if you add them all up, he averaged a triple-double over that time. Just amazing numbers. Here's Abdul-Jabbar. Here's Smith. Greg Smith small for a power forward, but with a big finish inside right there. Well, they needed that one finally. That's just one of five now overall. West passes to Erickson. Baylor backs in. The jump hook sent away by Abdul-Jabbar. Dandridge's shot is good. And that ties it up. And Bob Dandridge turned out to be a huge steal for the Bucks in the 1969 draft coming out of Norfolk State University. He lasted all the way to the fourth round, and Milwaukee took him at number 45. But he would go on to have a great career. Yeah, how about a four-time All-Star career? 73, 75, 76, and 79 for Dandridge. He was one of the best forwards of the 1970s. That's as bad a miscue as you'll see. It's good to be thinking a few steps ahead, but you've got to maintain some type of current awareness, too. Roberson, he's checked in for the Lakers. Here's Robertson. The big O. Screw Robertson drives the lane and lays it in. What a privilege it is to watch Jerry West and Oscar Robertson square off against each other. Two of the greatest players of all time going head to head. Chamberlain backing down. And Abdul Jabbar picks him up defensively. Chamberlain commits the charge. That is his first foul of the game. That's his first great defensive play there. He got position, got his feet set, and drew the charge. And that's a sacrifice of the body. I mean, to get run over like that, um, he showed some grit and sacrifice there. Making a switch here, the Bucks. Boozer's checked in. Clark, this offense has really been clicking. No doubt about it, giving the defense all kinds of trouble. And they're playing with so much energy offensively, the ball is really moving. John McLaughlin played at Indiana University and taken 24th in the draft back in 1965 and played with Oscar Robertson in Cincinnati for a couple seasons in the mid-60s. Bucks leading by three. Pass to Erickson. Dandridge defending. Straight up. Roberson goes up and lays it nice and easy. And, you know, going back, Steve, to, to John McLaughlin, he was acquired by the Bucks in their expansion draft in 1968. He became the first player to represent the Bucks in an all-star game. He was beloved during his eight seasons in Milwaukee and had his number retired. That jersey, number 14, was retired by the Bucks when his career was over. You get a chance to see that lightning-quick release from West. 
from 11 feet away. And that one's good. Now, you know, those are the kind of buckets that earned the big O, the eighth highest scoring average in NBA history. So timeout called here, the first for Los Angeles. Now, this Bucks organization, brand new at the time, well, their first season was 1968 and 69, and fortune struck quickly. They won a coin flip to add Lou Alcindor to the team, and that season they more than doubled their win total and made it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Smith checked in for Milwaukee. And then for the Lakers, McMillan comes in for Erickson, and McCarter subbed in for Goodrich. Chamberlain backing down. Here's West. Jerry West showing off his range. And at this point in the game, no three-point line. Yeah, pre-1980s, if you shot one up from long range, it wasn't normally a high-efficiency type of shot. Yeah, no question. I mean, the game has totally changed now uh, since the advent of that three-point shot. Defenses now are more spread out. Uh, more and more players are firing from the three-point line. 